Hey, what's going on guys? Timeister here and welcome back to Bixton. It's been a while since I booted up the old Bixton save, but I'm happy to be back. I'm really excited to launch this save again because boy, do we have some work cut out for us in this episode. Look at this rent crisis, guys. All over the city is just a sea of high rent price complaints. And it's it's gotten to the point where it's a dire situation. Doesn't matter where you go in the city, you can go all the way out here in the little town of Sunnyside and people are just complaining about rent everywhere. And just look at this, guys. This is a mess. <laughs> so... My goal for this episode is to get to the bottom of this. Why are there so many people complaining of high rent prices? We're going to try to figure that out this episode, and I'm going to try to fix this issue. So I'm going to try to eliminate most of these high rent complaints that are going on in town. So for starters, I'm going to focus my attention to this particular neighborhood in Eastern Bixton because it's a relatively new neighborhood that I built uh, not too long ago. And it seems to be the highest concentration of high rent complaints in the entire city. So let's zoom in here on a couple of these houses and let's investigate why these people are complaining of high rent. So um, this first house here, let's check. Their household wealth is wretched um, because there's one person living in this home who happens to be a student at the university, which happens to be this one here downtown. So this person, this solo student has decided to live in a house that's on the extremities of the city and commute their way all the way downtown to go to college. Uh, so that's, yeah, I can understand why rent would be uh, pretty high. <laughs> uh, so we have two people living in this house. Let's check what's going on here. So we have an old retired person and a student. So I guess that would make sense, right? I mean, especially if you don't have like a very big pension and all that. I mean, a single family home can be quite expensive. Uh, this house here, we have a single student who is going to a college, which is, uh, well, almost downtown as well. So another person that's commuting halfway across the city. So yeah, that makes sense that this person is struggling with, uh, with their finances. This guy over here, um, again, going to college, is a student living alone in a single family home. Uh, this person as well, going to university. Uh, okay, so this person is wealthy. What are, oops, what are they doing? Uh, another student. Okay, so there seems to be a theme over in this corner of town. Let's, let's go on over to this corner of this neighborhood to just check if that theme is, is, uh, equal across this entire neighborhood. So, yeah, another student, another student. Another student. Yeah, it's all college students that are living alone in uh, in these single family homes on the very extremity of the city. So this leads me to believe that there is not enough affordable housing in the city. So we have a pretty high, high density residential demand right now. So um, it shouldn't be a problem to provide some more low rent housing in the city to hopefully make up some room for these students. Uh, now, it appears that a lot of these students that are living out here in the boondocks, in the suburbs, are going to one of these two colleges. I saw a couple of them that were going to the technical college as well. Maybe I could just uh, plop a few buildings over here. I got some open land here. Here, let's maybe plop down like a few decent sized high-rise buildings here here maybe I'll make like a little project over here as well there this will this will be kind of like some dorms for the college students so my hope is by providing some more affordable housing these students will move out of these single-family homes and they'll move in to uh, to these college dorms. Actually, you know what? I should check my demographics here to see the age of my population. Uh, where is this anyway? Company profitability, workplace availability, population. So let's do citizen age. Okay, well, that's kind of weird because 
Well, maybe not. Yeah, there's a lot of elderly folks in this specific neighborhood. A lot of, like, middle-aged people. Not very many young people, though. Which is odd. Like, if you look here, there's a faint little high rent icon on a lot of these houses that are occupied by older people. So it's not just, like, young students. We're having a lot of, you know, middle-aged people that are are uh, going to college for some reason. Uh, so you can see here that my age demographic, my age distribution, 57% um, adults, a quarter of the entire population is children, just a few teens, and not a lot of seniors. So overall, Bixton has a pretty low um, age population, right? It's a pretty young population. Yeah, so we do have a lot of people going to school in, uh, in the city. So... Maybe eventually this problem is going to clear out as everybody gets educated and then they get good jobs and, uh, and you know, they settle in into these homes. But, I mean, for now, this is, uh, this is kind of an issue. So, yeah, I guess I'm just going to go across the entire map here. Let's go on to uh, near the university and let's provide some more low-rent housing. There. I think I'm just going to make this. See, the thing with Bixton is I'm not, like, totally focusing on realism. So, like, I could spend a lot of time decorating all these lots and stuff. And, you know, making sure that these... Um, I don't have, like, a million high-rises all bunched up together. Like, over here, I don't know. Like, these two buildings are really close to each other, for example. If I was really spending a lot of time detailing on this map, I would have probably, like, built a little parking lot here rather than having a big old building. But I'm not really aiming for that in Bixton. Uh, I'm not playing with any mods in this particular series. So uh, I'm, I'm basically just trying to play the game as it was intended to be played by, you know, actually following the simulation. Or trying to, right? I'm more of a... I've always been more of like a decorative kind of city painter player of the game, so uh, jumping into a very complex simulation game like City Skylines 2 has its challenges, although uh, a lot of these challenges may not be particularly related to my skill. <laughs> I think a lot of them are just related to the... Uh, the optimization of the game but anyways I still enjoy the game guys I'm still having a ton of fun there so I guess I'm just gonna go all throughout these neighborhoods here these old historic neighborhoods and provide some more cheaper housing closer to school let's maybe go on over here to Auburn the issue doesn't seem to be as widespread in Auburn. Like, there's a few high-rent places dotted around town, but it's not nearly as bad as out in Bixton, which is, uh, which is pretty crazy. And another thing, too, guys, that I have to highlight is look at downtown Auburn. There's literally nobody complaining of rent at all. And now if we jump on over to downtown Bixton, there's literally zero rent complaints at all. So, this is, you know, almost certainly related to housing availability. I think what's happening is, you know, there's a lot of opportunities in Bixton as far as, like, work goes, uh, education. There's a ton of options in town, but there's just nowhere to live. And students are being forced to move into single-family homes on the outskirts of town because there's not enough housing, right? All the housing is filled up here in downtown, like... I don't know if I choose a, a random residential building. Uh, yeah, there's only like a few uh, units that are available. This one is completely full. Uh, I don't know. There's a bunch of... Yeah, okay. So here we have another residential building. 120 out of 120. So yeah, I think what's happening is just like there's no housing availability. So I could go around town plopping all kinds of lower rent housing. But what I could also do is uh, place some medium density row housing as well because um, in these neighborhoods there does not appear to be any rental price issues whatsoever. Let's even go here. Oh yeah, even Quincy Harbor, like the downtown area is perfectly fine 
it appears to only be out in the suburbs so uh yeah that's another option as well i think i'm just gonna plow through this entire neighborhood and up zone to uh some higher density housing yeah literally i'm i'm just gonna plow through this entire neighborhood <laughs> And in the midst of all that, I should probably go remove some of these straggler single family homes and upzone those to uh, medium density as well, or high density, low rent rather. There. So I don't think I want to destroy every single family, uh, every single family home. I want to keep some because obviously there's a lot of people who are content with their living situation like look over here and like these old neighborhoods that were built pretty early on in the series like all oh, these guys are fine you know these these folks over here except this one guy this is probably a student yep definitely going to the technical university it's so weird eh like I think the, the the simulation of the game doesn't allow for multiple students to live in a single family home. Like, I feel like that should be a thing because I personally lived in a house with three other dudes while I was going to college and it was great. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe there should be a mod <laughs> for this, allowing multiple students to live together, you know, to split the rent, make everything a bit more comfortable financially for everyone. Uh, but that's okay. So, th another thing too, guys, that I've I've kind of been struggling with with Bixton is the simulation speed in the game now has slowed to a crawl. It is it's almost unbearable. Um, Bixton is a massive city at this point in City Skylines terms, and it's just. It's taking up so much power from my computer. Like, you know, I have a pretty high-end rig. And, uh, and you know, it, it... I mean, City Skylines is still a really tough game to run. And despite having my, uh, my settings here, let me just show you. If I go in Options, this is something you guys can do uh, as well. If you go into General Options, um, you can set your performance preference to simulation speed. Okay, so despite me doing that in Bixton... The simulation speed is just so, so slow. It's crazy. Like, if I zoom in here, like, this bus is just moving at a snail's pace. Maybe this isn't the best example. There's barely any traffic. But, yeah, here on the highway, like, yeah, traffic is just barely moving. And even if I speed up the simulation speed to max, it doesn't really make a change. You can see that there's a little moment where the simulation speed goes a bit faster and then it just slows back down. So um, it just makes building things in Bixton take forever. Like, yeah, and it doesn't matter if I change the, the game speed or not. So it makes it a little bit more challenging to, to create some engaging content for you guys just because like everything is slow and, and whatnot. Uh, but still, I know you guys like Bixton. I really like this city as well. I intend to keep going with it as long as I can. Uh, but yeah, just know that it's going to be a little slow going <laughs> for the remainder of this series, I think. So I'm going to skip ahead, guys. Um, I'm going to let this neighborhood develop and I'll catch you in just a moment. Okay, guys. So another thing that I'm doing is out here in the outskirts of the map, I don't necessarily want to pollute the suburbness with random, like, high-rise buildings right so uh, i'm gonna do the next best the, the next best thing which is uh plopping medium density housing over in this region so i'm just gonna pretty much go around the map just dotting these little apartment complexes all around town uh, i'm specifically targeting the people who are complaining of high rent prices just you know as an added effort <laughs> to get rid of them um but let me zoom out here a little bit, and uh, you can see here that this neighborhood is still under construction. And, uh, oh, it looks like these buildings have just propped up. 
Let's uh, let's check. Okay, so they're brand spanking new. There's barely anybody who's moved in yet. But for those who have uh, people who are moved in, well, we have an unemployed person. We have a wealthy senior. Okay, no students yet. Uh, household wealth poor, unemployed. Okay, well, maybe maybe this isn't the best <laughs> the best use of this building. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to to go ahead and say that uh, I'm gonna be plopping down some medium density apartments all throughout town as well. Just you know, dotted in all the uh, the little corners of the city. Providing some more options for uh, for living uh, accommodations. No, oh, I guess that's going to be in a little apartment complex there. But zooming out, it does appear that the situation is getting a little better. Like I didn't even touch this neighborhood at all, and look at this. There is uh, a ton of people that are no longer complaining of rent. Maybe these houses have become abandoned, and it, they're just not showing as abandoned yet. Yeah, like, this one's abandoned. I mean, I don't really know which ones had complaints and which ones didn't, but, you know, we had one there. Oh, yeah, another one here, so zero residents. So, looks like these people have finally moved out. These houses are vacant, and I guess they're just waiting for new residents to, uh, to move in or become dilapidated, and it's just going to become an empty lot. Maybe this entire neighborhood is going to become a, uh, a ghost town. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, anyways, as this neighborhood is developing, there is a number of other things that I can do to uh, to help with the rent situation. So while I was sort of researching what to do in this episode, there doesn't appear to be one single answer to uh, fixing rent in this game because it's an issue that a lot of players are plagued with, right? And uh, and it's not a simple fix. So. The solution to these high rent issues seems to be a number of small things that you need to employ uh, to, to try to, to regulate rent prices. Okay, so what I've done is, uh, so far this episode, I've pretty much upzoned these rent issues away to some degree. Okay, so I just basically just, by providing more housing, um, people are just able to uh, to move into cheaper places. More higher density housing, I should specify. But another thing that we can do is play around with our economy a little bit. So I'm making a ton of money right now. And your first instinct in this situation may be to lower your residential tax rate. Um, that's exactly what I did. Like, I think the default tax rate is 13% for everything. And I was just making so much money my instinct was to cut taxes, right? Just, you know, to, to, to cut down on the amount of money that I'm collecting from my citizens to allow them to afford a better place. But City Planner Plays has kind of shed some light on why you don't necessarily want to do this. This can actually make the situation worse and it can cause a feedback loop where it can actually make your citizens poorer, but your company's richer, right? So your companies are going to begin making more money as, uh, as their profitability increases as a result of lowering taxes and whatnot. So uh, anyways, we, we don't want that. So what you can do to hopefully help with your rent situation, I'm really hoping that's gonna help me out in, uh, in my case here, is I'm going to adjust my tax rate based on education. So this is going to entice my, my people to get highly educated, in order to afford, you know, better homes, get better jobs and whatnot. Whereas, well, if you're uneducated, uh, you're going to pay more taxes. Um, so I'm going to try doing this. I heard that this works based on the, uh, the research that I've done. And yeah, I guess I'll just skip ahead and we'll see if, uh, if these rent issues go away. I think I might just maybe dot this particular area with some apartment complexes, specifically where the complaints are coming from. The double whammy, right? We'll clear the issue one way or another. All right, now, as I'm waiting for all the rest of the city to develop, 
I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this particular neighborhood that I'm focusing on this episode, and I'm gonna build a bus network because this is pretty much the only area in the entire city that does not have a proper public transportation option. Uh, so I'm gonna do a simple bus line, and I'm gonna start things off way on the other side over here at this bus station, as you can see here that I have a couple of slots that are still empty. And uh, we're gonna future-proof this area a little bit as well. So all along this main road here, that will eventually become a main road, I'm gonna add a series of bus stops, which will eventually make their way into our neighborhood in question, which is over here. Now, zooming out here, I noticed that I could probably do a better job with all of the uh, bus routes and whatever that are in this area because I have a metro station that's right in front of the technical college. A lot of citizens that are living here are going to the technical college. Um, so I'm going to want to connect this college up pretty good to that neighborhood, but I also want to connect up this metro station and I have a couple of other lines here that I could just like string over here and, and connect all of this up. So let's do, uh, I'm going to add a couple stations going up to here, a couple of stops, I mean, and then what I'll do from here is I'll add some stops going through the industrial park. And then this blue line and uh, this new line will intersect over here. And then the bus line will go on its merry way over to this neighborhood. And then I think what will happen here is I'm going to make a loop. going through this neighborhood. I'll make sure to put one near the school. Yeah, I think that should do it. And may as well delete this stop. This one's not gonna be used. There we go. Let's give that a try. So I'm gonna go into my bus line tool. We're going to add another route now we're going to connect everything up i'm just going to pause my game real quick here just so it makes it a bit smoother to place down all these stops okay so then we're going to go up this road right to the metro station and then i'll build a waypoint there we go. We'll intersect with that stop over here. And then we'll continue on to our new neighborhood. There, and I'll bring it back over here. This is kind of going to make a weird line set up it, it's it's a little bit of a detour but that's okay because the more services that we're connecting the better now i do have a little bit of a concern with what i'm doing guys so we're dealing with a rent crisis right now an affordability crisis in bixton and the thing is the more amenities, the more attractions, the more parks, the more public transportation that you provide to an area, the more it's going to raise the cost of living of said area, right? You know, just more taxes are going to have to go towards supporting all of those things. So, you know, it's, it's going to affect the affordability of this neighborhood, right? Right now, this neighborhood's probably relatively cheap because there's just nothing, right? There's no public transportation. I only have a small number of parks and a school, that kind of stuff. But for sure, by adding all of the amenities that I am this episode, this area is going to become more expensive. But I shouldn't be too concerned, I don't think, because if I go to like any other part of town, 
and look you can see here guys all of the uh, the rent issues are slowly going away um, pretty much every other part of the city is just filled with amenities like just look at my public transportation view here there's not like a, a blank area at all in the city where there is no bus stops or train stops or metro stations or whatever you know the whole city is pretty well covered and we're dealing with this rent issue pretty good so I don't know maybe I shouldn't be too concerned about what's gonna happen to this neighborhood so anyway there we have it I got the bus network figured out Here, let me just clean this up a little bit there we go makes the line look a bit more uniform and you know what guys I have this yellow line here coming through this neighborhood I may as well actually here's what I'm gonna do I am going to move this stop to the other side of the campus oh wow it looks like it connected everything automatically that makes it a little easier on me because what I want to do is uh, just connect up this third route here to the metro station so now we have two lines that are intersecting with it making it even better and I guess by extending this line I may as well add a couple of stations well I guess just one there we'll add another stop here oh 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 is it not working hey hang on my maybe it's just the view oh okay there all right guys well that's better now we got that covered I think the addition of a bus line should help. Actually, let me just manage it real quick here. Uh, oh, no, that's the wrong line. It's the yellow one. Uh, let me go into my transportation view, bus lines. Oh, yeah, and I have a, I had a naming scheme I remember I was doing. So it looks like I'm just doing BX for Bixton, bus line, and then a number. So I think just by adding BX dash bus line 27 I'm assuming this is the one is it yes it is okay assigned vehicles I don't need 15 buses I think I'm just gonna lower this down to like seven honestly I think seven buses is good enough it's a long line at 15 kilometers long but it's not totally unrealistic at the same time like we're starting to get into the outskirts of the city of course public transportation density is going to uh, to go down by some degree right so I shouldn't be too concerned about that I think seven buses is enough to uh, to service this area there all right so I'll unpause the game and we'll let that play out as you can see I mean the rent issues are pretty much all gone here guys uh, but you know as I mentioned my concern is that maybe rather than seeing a bunch of rent issues we're maybe going to see a bunch of abandonment icons appearing here in not too long <laughs> that is my fear but that's okay um just new people will eventually replace those houses and by then hopefully the rent issue will be long gone so public transportation is done let's just uh briefly check on what other amenities i can uh, provide this area with looks like mail coverage is not very good over here am i due for another post office is there a way i can tell what are post okay yeah these blue icons are post offices so yeah i think i think we can use another post office in this part of town i'm just gonna go ahead and plot one here on the main drag and then i'll just go ahead and plop down a bunch of mailboxes all over this section of town And, and just in case you missed in past episodes where I mentioned like why do I just spam an entire area with these uh, mailboxes it's a little trick to slightly reduce the amount of traffic in your city so rather than having all of this entire neighborhood coming to one post office to get uh, their mail um, just a few post office trucks are gonna deliver mail to all these mailboxes so then the people can then walk or you know it's just a short drive to go get their mail at one uh, one of these mailboxes so it reduces traffic just ever so slightly 
makes things a bit more efficient. So there we have it. As simple as that, guys, we have some proper mail coverage. And while we're at it, let's check our telecom coverage to make sure that that's going good. Looks like signal isn't isn't too great over in this part of town. I could probably do with another cell phone tower or a radio mast. Or maybe I could do, maybe a telecom tower would be even better because it will just cover like this whole area. And I got some open space here up on this hill. Yeah, honestly, I think I'll just do a giant TV tower right on the peak of this hill. I mean, it kind of sucks for the people living in the area now that they now have a giant tower in their backyard, but you know, it's a uh, it's an essential piece of infrastructure, right? So I would gladly have a giant tire <laughs> tire giant tower in my backyard if it meant I could have like five bars of full 5G at all times. There. All right. Well, I think we're doing pretty good, guys. Just a few more rent issues. Um, I think these can be cleared up probably by just continuing to plop some higher density residential. So I'm just going to replace <laughs> some of these rental price complaints with some apartment buildings. That's an easy way to deal with the problem. I don't want to overdo it though, because I already have a bunch of apartment buildings in this neighborhood. I want to be careful not to uh, totally ruin the neighborhood. But I think we can agree that this is already like a lot better than when we started this episode. I think it's still more of an issue in this part of town, but we'll slowly clear that up as the city uh, grows. Well, guys, this is what the city looks like after only a few minutes after upzoning these entire neighborhoods, after providing some new homes for all of these students, a bit closer to all of the colleges. Now, there is still a number of people complaining of rent, but you know what? The game wouldn't be realistic if there wasn't anybody complaining about rent, right? Like, who doesn't complain about rent? But the situation is definitely, definitely a lot better than it was at the start of this episode. There's still a little bit of people complaining over here in Quincy Harbor and, and whatnot, but, I mean, you have to agree. This is looking a lot better than it did at the start of this episode. So, um... I still have a little tiny bit of medium density residential, so I think I'm just going to dot the map with a few more apartments. Um, I did swoop over Quincy Harbor, adding a number of little apartment buildings here. So they're not like super tall. They don't quite ruin that, you know, semi-rural, you know, small town feel. Um, so I really like just dotting these little apartment buildings around. But... Yeah, overall, guys, I think this was a pretty successful episode. I think most of the this, you know, getting rid of the uh, the high rent prices was mostly attributed to just rezoning the city. You can see that I pretty much cleared all of my residential demand right off of the chart. But it leaves me with a huge commercial and office demand. So I'm going to leave you guys with that this episode. I'm going to call it a success, even though there's still a little tiny bit of work left to do but i mean i think these are just gonna go away on their own um but next episode what i would like to work on is i want to actually expand auburn i want to make auburn not quite the size of bixton you know bixton is like the metropolis of the map but i want to expand auburn just uh, quite a bit not a lot but still quite a bit um i still want to have like more high rises and stuff over here in downtown Auburn. So it's gonna provide more jobs to uh, to the economy, to the map, and it's gonna increase our residential demand as well, which will allow us to then start expanding in the outskirts of Auburn. Because as you can see, we still have a ton of land available to develop this map. And like I said in the very beginning, my goal is to just, because like I said in the very beginning of this series, my goal is to create a realistic looking American style city using no mods 
nothing like that just everything default <laughs> So guys, I'm going to leave you with that. I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope it was useful to you. Hopefully you gained a little bit of inspiration from this episode to fix your very own rent issues in your city because I'm sure you have some. <laughs> Everybody does. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, do leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. I would really appreciate that. And make sure you stay tuned to the very next episode. Guys, thanks again so much for watching. Take care.